Come out with us and play Love Your London Have a banana In today's episode of Love Your London, we'll be looking at not one but two very old trees in the gardens behind the Muswell Hill Methodist Church on Pages Lane, one of which dates from before the English Civil War. Plus we'll be explaining why you need to look out for chewing gum on the pavement, but perhaps not for the reasons that you may be expecting. But we start our journey on Sydney Road, the birthplace of a very important British industry. Okay, now this is really, I'm really excited to tell you about this. We're at High Ridge. Um, this um, whole area, obviously it doesn't look like it now, this is the birthplace of British cinema. In 1895, a young 25-year-old movie pioneer by the name of Robert Paul uh, teamed up with photographic expert Bert Akers to create Britain's first ever movie camera suitably called the Paul Acres camera. Oops, I should point out here that it wasn't actually called the Paul Acres camera at the time. That name was actually given to it in the 1970s by John Barnes. No, not that one, cinema historian John Barnes, who wrote an amazing five-volume history of early English cinema called The Beginnings of the Cinema in England, 1894-1901. Each volume is well over 300 pages long and we've provided a link in the description where you can buy them in paperback and by doing so you are helping the channel. That picture, by the way, in the top left-hand circle is actually of Bert Akers using the camera to film the Derby in 1895. Um, however, if you do want to save money and not support us, next time you're near the Elephant and Castle and once things start opening up again, you may wish to try your luck at the fantastic library at the Cinema Museum on Dugard Way, where you might be able to browse it. Again, details are in the description below. Here is the original patent, and here is a working replica, lovingly recreated by Adelie Cousins Herbert Road and Trewinard, and I urge you all to check out their website, theracetocinema.com, which is fantastic. Again, the link is in the description below, but please wait until after this episode ends. You will be able to read about all of the cameras that they've recreated, as well as see footage that they have filmed with them. Anyway, back to Sydney Road. Now, the following year, in 1896, um, he invented uh, something called the Theatograph. Um, also was known as the animatograph. I'll, um, you'll see all these um, strange words in the subtitles below. Um, and that was Britain's second ever film projector, the animatograph, designed by Robert Paul. Um, and one year after that, in 1897, Robert Paul built right here the animatograph works. This was a movie studio with film sets and everything. It was huge. It was this, bu this building, a few buildings down there. It was absolutely uh, huge. It's obviously all now modern flats and houses, but this is the birthplace of British cinema. Now, I'm going to show you, because uh, fortunately these are now copyright free, I'm going to show you a couple of snips. Um, uh, the first one is The Magic Sword, and this is one of the many fantasy films that he made right here in 1901. And this little one here, this is a little, a very interesting quirky one. This is called the over, an over incubated baby. Um, again, made right here. Um, that, that one was directed by Walter R. Booth. Um, w Walter and Robert did a lot of things together, a lot of um, collaborations. Um, and, and Walter Booth worked for Paul right here between 1899 and 1906. Oh, and if you'd like to find out more about Robert Paul, and you can't really afford all those amazing volumes by John Barnes, you can buy this relatively new book by Professor Ian Christie from Birkbeck University. And by using the link in our description, not only will you be helping this channel, but you will save 15% on the recommended retail price. Robert Paul's place was just up there, the, the estate. This is Sydney Road. Um, and just wanted to point out there, the pub called the Furlong. 
Um, now, back in 1979, um, a chap called Tim Martin actually opened a pub there and called it Weatherspoon. So that was the very, very first Weatherspoons to be opened. That, that was the very first Weatherspoons to ever be opened. It was just called Weatherspoons back then. There you go. It's now called the Furlong. And we're now going to just pop up there. This is Colney Hatch Lane. We're now going to pop up there because there's a little shop just over there I want to show you, uh, which is where Robert Paul used to live. Uh, this here is Muswell Hill International Food Centre and this is where Robert Paul used to live. Robert Paul, the father of British cinema, used to live right here, Muswell Hill International Food Centre. Obviously that wasn't what it was then, it was a residential house. But the main reason I've brought to you here is not to look at the food centre, but to check out Caesar's Barber. Now, closed at the moment because unfortunately, unlike, um, unlike garden centres, barbers and, ha and hairdressers in the UK are not considered essential services. This barbers didn't used to be called Caesar's, used to be called Snips. And this is where Suggs from Madness used to have his hair done. Um, and in fact, there used to be in here. It's it's gone now because I assume I assume because it's now under new ownership, they've taken it down. But um, there there used to be a picture of Suggs in there with his hair done, and people could say, "I'll have a Suggs, please." Uh, that's when it was called Snips. This is the Muswell Hill Methodist Church and um, we're here to see their amazing garden um, and the their amazing the trees. They're amazing trees and we're here with Kate. Yeah. Uh, you, you will remember Kate from previous episodes. Um, uh, as you know, she lives locally and she's also been helping with, uh, with the episodes as well. Kate is also one of our patrons via Patreon. If you would like to support us financially, there's details below. However, the best way you can support us for free is by sharing this video on your social media, by hitting that like button, and if you haven't done so already, hitting subscribe and clicking on that notification bell. It costs you nothing and means the world to us. <sighs> this is a lovely garden. So this garden is open to the public? Um, so the, the gardens belong to the North Bank Estate, which belongs to the Methodist Church nationally. Yep. Um, it isn't a public right-of-way, but they're lovely gardens to be able to share. So during normal times, when we're not in lockdown and things, um, then the gates are open at both ends, and on weekdays from uh, about 9.30 to 4 o'clock, then uh, the gardens are open for people to come in. Yeah, okay. Like, we're hoping that church services will start again by Easter. At by the Easter. moment, everything's online. But, but we do copy and chat on Zoom so afterwards right. uh, for about an hour. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. yeah, so the, uh, the gardens, uh, which of course, uh, the old house here um, dates back to about 1850. Yeah. And um, it was bought in 1924 when the last resident of the house, uh, Samuel Cook, died right. and there was a distinct possibility that the whole estate would be sold for development and we'd have yeah. had a very nice road up through the middle of it and things. It was nothing to do with the church at right. that point yeah. uh, because the old Victorian church was on the other side of Coney Hatch Lane mm -hmm. but there was a, a wealthy philanthropic member of the church called Guy Chester who lived in one of the big houses on Coney Hatch Lane that backs on to here yep. and he worked mm. in quite a lot with the family who lived here and he saw the potential of the place for church and community so um, he made an offer to the to the family and he bought the house and the whole estate um, oh, that's great so that was back in 1924 and then the new church was built there in 1985 adjoining the the, the old house so this is now our church hall mm -hmm. yeah. On, on the website, um, if, if you go under my history, yep. you'll see some fantastic historic videos that Guy Chester took because he was very oh, keen on that. Am I allowed to oh, put yes, them yes, in the yes. film? Just on, on the website and it's uh, under I'm, my history. And I can put that on, our... on YouTube now and okay. you can see 
people in from about the early 1930s onwards wandering yeah. children playing Wandering. in the garden and you don't mind if i you copy some of that and put that in our in our video a little uh, bit of it no that's fine because it's there publicly available and it's probably well yeah. well past copyright yeah. anyway yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah yes, yes it and a veritable treasure trove of archive footage it is. From 1936 to 1972, we have decades of these videos. Links to the four best ones are in the history section of the church's website, as Jill said. Um, and you'll be able to see these in the description below. However, we also provide you with a link to the entire playlist on YouTube. So you've got a good three hours worth of this stuff if you want to see it. Uh, but please, please don't look now. Just wait till this is over, because we still have to show you two amazing old trees. Plus, we want to tell you something fascinating about why these miniature paintings on chewing gum are being discovered all over Muswell Hill. So don't go away yet. Come on, let's go back to the garden. And Those crooks get together here at night. Yeah. And in yeah. the daytime, Gate. Yeah. Sometimes I've been there looking at uh, with a toddler group and playing my guitar and singing songs with them and we look out of the windows and there are a couple of foxes just sunbathing here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have the through traffic, it's not too not long. Yeah. Boy, we have a, an allotment behind us and they are out all the time. Uh, and then you go, quite a frightening noises. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. something being strangled. I mean there's a huge fox colony who live here. <laughs> yeah, so they're allowed to, it's natural oh, woodland. Food. There's lots of things yeah. yeah. So that's the mulberry tree. Ah, this is it. So this is 150 years old, this one. Um, but, but I'm, it's I'm, been our old. This is uh, Morris Gra, <laughs> which is the... Um, so, because the, the, the church's boundary is along here. Yeah. Yes. So it's yeah. technically just the other side of it. Well, the mulberry's always about the last one to come into leaf. Yeah. Does it get the um, fruit? And, uh, and when we... When we have... Uh, when, the horse, uh, when the mulberry is in leaf and the fruit is there as well um we have pigeons who do purple poo on our front doorsteps <laughs> yes. and, and all over the cars and, and yeah. everything <laughs> yeah. yeah so these, these are the um if you remember our episode uh, about Whitechapel uh, when we spoke about mulberries and um, oh, yes. uh, and the fact that the wrong mulberries were brought over the, the modus uh, was brought over no. uh, because uh, King James thought yes. that they would silk be worms. perfect for making it for silk mm -hmm. they don't but unfortunately um, the silkworms don't eat that no. particular uh, type right. of um, and the white mulberry don't grow. Um, uh -huh. but, yeah uh -huh. this, this is a lovely old tree Nice yeah. We have to be really mean and say, no please children, no climbing. Because yes. it's well, no, so it's climbable. Yes. But little feet would knock all these little twigs and branches yeah. off. And, and all so the, it wouldn't be just the little kids who want to climb it. Well, yes. I want to climb yeah. it too. <laughs> and if I see somebody in a tree, I'll, I'll be heading up there too. So it's yeah. best that nobody. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are home oak, that's a, that's like the Spanish yeah. Encina. There it is, Encina. Sure, with the little uh, prickly leaves. Yeah. yeah. That's an old one. I can see why the, the kids would want to, uh, I want to climb it. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's a survivor, all right. And look, all the solar solar power Yes. up there on yeah, the roof. It's on a roof like that. That, that. Is that a big old oak tree there, all twisted? That certainly is, yeah. It, we can't go in there, but... Mm. Yeah. I do like this garden. Yeah, well, and it's it's very wide and open. Lawn, is this is that lawn tennis? I mean, it's called Muswell Hill Methodist uh, Tennis Club, but it's um, it's not directly associated with the church yeah. at all. But it's part of the estate. Yes. And then just beyond that, there's a block of sheltered okay. flats called the paddock. Yep. And beyond that, there's a Something. residential home called the Meadow. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're both run by Methodist homes. So okay. it's, it's That's a, great. a yeah. huge sort of complex altogether. Beautiful, isn't it? Really nice. Squirrels. I think I can see it. Right. Oh, and then spread out into a line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because the uh, circumference is so much, it, it is sometimes quite deceptive mm. how big the circumference is. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Here it is. So, 
pictures have had to be locked, you know, they be through the, yeah. Yeah. the windows yeah. over there. <laughs> Trimmed it right back, because that, yeah. that tree is... Yes, I mean, you can Ooh. imagine how... Good heavens! How the sort of cantilever effect of oh. branches that... And you don't want it falling on you. No. So it's four, four, 450 years. Well, exactly what's that? It's 400 and... It's about 1650. Yeah, get some scale here. 16. I'm, I'm from Vancouver, so we're, I'm used to big trees. Okay. <laughs> this is more our size, give it an idea of... That's yeah. a listed tree for sure. Oh, yeah. You know. It should have a... I don't know how much time it's got left. Yeah, it should have a little thing here. There we, oh, it? Yeah, there's a tag. Yeah, there it is. That's the number. Carefully, yes. That's so listed, listed, listed tree. Come and examine it regularly, and everything is being done to give it as long a life as possible. Yeah. But well, it's, it's it's not just this one. It's, you know, it's it's. it's and they have a lifespan, frankly. Mm. I mean, the plane trees, you know, there's some of them are that old, but it's hard to know because the hybridizing of them. And it, but this is, I you think, can see it starting to. I think this was one of the. You know, it would have been among one of the early chestnuts. Because that's because amazing. they were. Only brought over to this country yeah. around about the yeah. mid-1600s. That's, that's they're the non-edible ones, not the sativa that the Romans the, brought. The, we had one lovely moment in a, Beautiful. a sort of retreat quiet day sort of thing that was for people from all the churches. And we had to stop and sing and ponder in different places. And uh, we were standing around a group of us here and we were being asked just to stop and think and consider what thoughts came into our minds. And, uh, you know, some people were thinking worthy thoughts about root structures and all sorts of metaphors with that. Um, and I happen to have at the side of me Sister Anne-Marie, who is a dear friend who's a Catholic sister. And I said to her, I'm just thinking, Anne-Marie, that when this thing was planted, we'd have been murdering each other. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. how lovely it is. Yeah, now course, here we are. Wall. You know, People have been great friends hanging and meditating together. <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd be swung from a tree lip for stealing a loaf of bread. Yes, yeah. So yes. it wasn't. It was an ugly yeah. time. But you definitely wouldn't have had Catholics and Protestants standing no. next to no. each other, having no. a nice little retreat, <laughs> quiet day. <laughs> no. Assistant is from North Ireland. Oh, yeah. My assistant is from North Ireland. Uh, she is. Yes, the sister, Sister Anne Marie. You're quite right. She is. Well, no, she's. I think she's from. But that's not what I meant. Ah, no. Sorry. No, no assistant. Sorry. No assistant. Sorry. Assistant. Oh, assistant. Got your I have a question. Yeah. Yes, Kate. Okay. What is the M? E T H Methodist. Well, now it is very much like all the other churches in the Church of England mm -hmm. and uh, other other sorts of churches that are around. It started in the Church of England, um, but uh, over three hundred years ago. But it didn't want to break away, it's just that John Wesley, who was uh, a priest in the Church of England, he wanted to start preaching to people who never went to church. So he started preaching out of doors and working people and, and helping them to be educated as well as to learn about the Christian faith. And um, so little groups of Christians started uh, forming and he wanted them to be able to be proper churches themselves and uh, but that didn't work with how the Church of England was at that time. It would work fine with how it is now. <laughs> they look like little mouths. Yeah. <laughs> that was really interesting, wasn't it? Um, 
Uh, that was the Methodist church. And just outside the Methodist church, we've just spotted something on the floor. Now, look at this. Now, that bit of chewing gum, which, uh, which has been painted, um, is actually by a local artist uh, called Ben Wilson. Oh, yeah. Um, and he's done a lot of these. Uh, he's done. He's done. He did one outside the library to save the library. Um, and he's. And yeah, also, if you go on that, if you go on that Parkland Walk that we went to a few episodes ago, uh, where the old railway track was, um, there's quite a few examples still there, which he did last year. Um, but this particular one, I'm just trying to see what it says. North Bank House quite hard to see it's, it's quite faded but these are all uh, dotted all over Muswell Hill really really interesting right, so got, keep, keep an eye out for them um, just uh, keep, keep keep an eye out for them uh, they're really really interesting and um, there's there's loads of them and while we're on the topic of Ben Wilson, the chewing gum man, let's jump into our virtual dirigible courtesy of Google Earth. We'd much rather be using our drone, but there's laws about that in London now. And take a quick butcher's at Muswell Hill Library. There's a bit of a story to tell here. Okay. So... It might be blurry. Wait. Okay. Sharon, enough of that. These, these, these ones are very important. Look, look, look closely. It says Save Muswell Hill Library. Can you see that? Cool. We are outside the Muswell Hill. Public Library, um, built in 1931. Um, this library is absolutely stunning. Um, grade 2 listed. It almost closed down in 2016 by Haringey Council, uh, but a very successful campaign was organised and it remains in public use as a library. Uh, designed in 1931 by WH Adams, it's absolutely beautiful inside and out. There's even a mural in there from 1938, painted by students. There's a picture here, hopefully I can show you, um, of it. Um, obviously we can't go inside there at the moment because of the pandemic, but it is a fascinating, beautiful place. Um, and the mural actually tells the whole story about King Malcolm being cured or being by the curative waters of the Mossy Well. Now, um, as you will see, um, the, uh, there's chewing gum here on the floor, which says um, save Muswell Hill Library. This actually speaks volumes about Haringey Council, I'm afraid. I can say, I'm not, I, as you know, I'm not a massive fan of Haringey Council. Um, you'll have sussed that from our episodes on Alexandra Palace and that massive debt that they amassed and they wanted the uh, trust to pay. Um, now, um, Haringey Council tried to sue Ben Wilson for painting on the pavement. Oh, come on. Seriously? Um, now, he won the case because he said that he wasn't painting on the pavement. He was painting on chewing gum that was stuck to the pavement. Um, and he won. Um, but it really is unbelievable that Haringey Council could have been so petty in the first place. I mean, this is the local library. This was a massive campaign. It's like they don't really care if they, I mean they if they're going to win the elections or not. I mean they, I mean this this was this was such a um, a scandal at the time to be honest. I mean this was only um, six four, was it four years ago. Looks like they're doing some filming over there. I won't bother them. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be bothered when you're filming. Yeah. So we won't bother them. But anyway, fellow, fe Jiggling along. I think they got a smoke machine in there too. Yeah. Choice. Yeah. Anyway.
We hope you enjoyed this video. Next time on Love Your London, we'll be checking out the fantastic shops on Muswell Hill Broadway and Fortis Green Road. And we'll be talking a lot about the area's amazing musical heritage. Oh, is that gone, Alvin? Yeah, it is. Whoa. Like us and subscribe to us. Till next time. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Love Your London. Have a banana.